Welcome back to the Padilla Family Homestead. We are back for December's garden tour to kind of show you an update on where we are with our three green stock towers. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you there's been lots of growth, which is amazing. And I'm actually going to harvest one thing today. It's a little tiny thing, but it's still fun. So I'll flip this around and show you where we are. For those that don't know, we're in Zone 9B in Northern California. We live in an apartment and we grow in three green stock towers. So this very first one is where we're going to start. It has the least variety of things. Um, the top has Brussels sprouts, which are doing amazing. These are doing way better than last year's did. Um, I'm super happy with what's going on here. I've actually harvested some of these leaves to add into soups and uh, eggs and things like that. Um, I actually really enjoy grabbing some of these and getting the color difference in our meals. I don't think this guy is going to survive for very long because uh, we've been really teasing with some um, frost here. We've been flirting with it. so. Uh, this is a pink celery, and I believe it's going to die with the frost, but we will see what I can do here with this. Um, this one is growing. This one back here I thought died, and it didn't, um, but I planted radishes because I thought it died. It tried to come back, but it's not growing because it's not getting a lot of light. This is actually what we're going to harvest right now. Oh, it's split. Look at how cute that is. So I love popping radishes into the green stalks because they grow fast. I'm going to leave that there for throughout the tour. Actually, this one's ready too. So radishes are quick growing. Um, they're easy to come out and harvest what you want, add them to a saute, a soup, a whatever, right? Um, so this is super fun. When my peas are done here, um, when they die, whenever we get a hard enough frost, then what I'm gonna do is replace these pockets all with radishes, which will be great. So that's the top. I have two green Brussels sprouts two of the red purple Brussels sprouts, two celeries, which it's really one celery and some radishes. And then everything else going down, um, we have three nasturtiums per layer and um, th three pockets of these uh, sweet peas, sugar snap style peas. And I am super excited to hopefully get some peas. Um, these are growing a lot longer than I thought they were. Uh, the thing on them said like six inches to one foot, which that is much further than six inches to one foot. So I don't know, but uh, they're still doing good. And uh, we had some issues at the very beginning. And so I have some stuff that is kind of dead in the middle here, but I have really good at the end and more growing back at the top. So, um, I'm just letting them do their thing. We have lots of really pretty flowers popping in. I really like these. They're super pretty. All right, and then, so the nasturtiums, I have the black velvet on the first row. I have a pink on this second row of this, and then a cream color, creamy yellow color on the third row. And the bottom is all peas. So I'll swirl this around, kind of let you see all the sides going. You can see these peas have seen better days, but they're still doing their stuff here, which is completely awesome. So there's been lots of flowers blooming. I need to come through here and take out some of the nasturtiums that are getting disease spots like this. But again, tons more peas. I had a nasturtium bloom, but it's gone now. 
and it's really cold down so I don't know if they're gonna keep blooming or not so that's this first tower which is amazing it's lush and beautiful so then over here is um, a fun one this is kind of my soup tower um, I have beautiful kales all across the top I have ragged jack kale uh, blue scotch curl kale and this beautiful scarlet kale it's like one of my favorites so that's the top row is two of each of those and then down here I've talked about this in past videos but this is where my collards are I have um, Vates collards growing and this I'm not sure what it is it's kind of a little bit pokier um, this is the smaller version of it and this is the one that's grown huge um, I'm still I tried to do picture this it said it's a brassica of some sort I really don't think it's collards I'm tempted to let this just grow and see what it is but I mean it's huge it is huge it is healthy it's taking over some of my kale up here but it's huge it's healthy it's doing great so I don't know I may try to eat some of it I'm just trying to figure out what it is if you know what this is let me know it kind of has even the top right here is kind of prickly I don't know if you can see that it's kind of prickly and it has the edges but it definitely looks like a brassica. I just don't know which one. So we have some more collards right here. We have been, since this is the good collards, we've been, what well, we know what they are, we've been eating off of these quite a bit, which is great. I just broke a leaf. Oh my gosh. Guys, I think this is broccoli. This smells like broccoli really strong. I'm wondering. Okay, um, the next row down are cabbages. I have all this same type of cabbage. I've been harvesting the outer leaves. I'm not trying to get them to a head. Um, I did have a couple of these, I think because of how close these are, which I really don't have much of an option with the bush. I don't really have much of an option here with how close they are. So, um, some of them got some powdery mildew, which I'm combating, so I'm trying to work on that. But um, I just keep trying to rotate these. But they're really pretty. I've been really enjoying the cabbages. We've been harvesting them to take in and again add to soups. I'm using them as a cut and come again instead of allowing them to head how pretty that one is you can see the start of the powdery mildew there which is not good we'll have to deal with that here in a little bit but you can see where I've been harvesting so we've been really enjoying this um, and then the Swiss chard is coming in I really haven't harvested anything off the Swiss chard but it's lower down so it doesn't get as much light but it is growing some of them are growing better than others, but I'm really excited about these. And my turnips made a comeback. So these were decimated by caterpillars and they were really taken down by the leaf blowers right after being decimated, but they're starting to make a comeback. So I am just letting them do their thing. So that's our first two towers here. Lots of fun, lots of food. I get to come out here harvest. By the way, nasturtiums are great on focaccia bread. Like, we love them. So this tower is over by our front door. It doesn't have access to as much rain, um, but, so I need to remember to water it actually. Oh no, I think it's good. It's like, I might need to water it. But this is tatsoi on the top and some purple bok choy so that goes all the way around the top is tatsoi and bok choy 
And then I tried to do heading lettuces on this row. And uh, this one died. And everything is really small. These didn't do as good. I don't know what the deal is. Like, they were planted at the exact same time as this lettuce. And this is what I have. So, I don't know. I mean, this one's starting to come together here. This might be a butter crunch lettuce. That's what it looks like to me. Um, the next two rows are um, cut and come again lettuces. So I just keep coming out here and I pick some off when I want it and I create a salad. Or I just munch on it because I like lettuce straight off the plant. I want to say this is my bronze leaf lettuce that I did an entire row of because I really, really like it. And then I had some other lettuces down here that I'm trying out. Um, I don't think my family's very fond of the red, but it is what it is. I'm going to rotate this around so you can kind of see. Lots and lots of lettuce. And then down here we have our mustard. So I have the giant red leaf mustard. I have them sewed really close together so that way I can do cut and come again. I also did that. Keep rotating this. This one's not on the spinny thing, it's just on wheels. This is a different type of mustard which just always grows more pro prolific um, and is doing amazing. I've harvested some of that already and then underneath it which I probably should not have done it this way I probably should have put the mustard on the bottom I don't know because my <laughs> cilantro is trying to peek through we have harvested this for taco Tuesday a few times I'm probably at the point where actually where I have some of those peas I'm probably gonna pop in some more cilantro because we're using more than we can eat I mean more than we can grow we're using more than we can grow so I need to be able to have more of it. Um, I'd like to be able to dehydrate some so we have some for the summer. But this is radishes down here. I don't think they're getting enough light where they are. Um, so I'm not expecting a ton out of them. Maybe I should do another row of cilantro there. So I may switch some stuff out this month. We'll see. We are coming up to the shortest amount of light at the end of this month. So things are gonna be growing slower, and then in January, it'll start to slightly grow faster and faster as each day gets more and more light throughout spring. Um, so I'm excited about that, but these have been producing a ton of food. And that is December's garden tour. I hope this encourages you to grow where you are. You may not have the ability to have a ton of beds, but I have so much food. I have 114 different pockets, three planters, and I have lettuce. I have so many greens that I'm growing over the winter. Um, I don't know if I'll get Brussels sprouts, but I'm getting greens from it. Um, there's peas, hopefully, that we'll end up with, some root vegetables. Um, but I'm able to come out my door and go, do you know what? I just need a little bit of this or a little bit of that and easily add it to my meal without having to run to a grocery store or whatever. So living in the city, living where it's very expensive to buy things, just like four leaves of Swiss chard is $3.99. And right here, I have so much Swiss chard that's going to be coming up. It's the same price for kale leaves. And I have all of these. And these are seeds I bought in 2020 that I just plant a few here and a few there throughout the years and they have made a huge impact on what we can harvest for such a little amount of cost. So I encourage you to grow where you are, grow something. Um, if you can't have outside stuff, you can do some stuff inside, um, but absolutely get your hands dirty and grow something. This is such a hands-off garden. It's amazing. I don't even have to water it that often and it's it's just great so we will see you in january for the next garden tour in january our weather usually gets a little bit it's a little bit more rainy we can have hail we had big storms last year in january so hopefully everything goes great um and we don't have any issues but um yeah 
So I would love to know what you are growing right now and how your garden is doing. And we will see you on the next video.